Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Form Check Friday. I know we're a little bit late getting this out. We had some technical difficulties, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, first off, if you're interested in getting featured on Form Check Friday, go ahead and send your lifting videos into formcheckfriday at gmail.com. Pretty self-explanatory. Need only submit once. We do keep the pool of existing submissions until they're featured, at which point they're deleted from the pool. So no need to resend anything. As a point of interest, and something I think is worth discussing, if you guys are interested in coming out, meeting some of the Calorie Barbell coaches, uh, and learning a whole heck of a lot about lifting, sleep, nutrition, velocity-based training, uh, mental imagery training, all kinds of cool stuff, we're doing some seminars in the UK, uh, outside London, in Basingstoke. We're also doing a seminar outside of, actually, sorry, I'm not sure where it's near, but it's in the M-E-A-U-X, the Mo, Meow, Meow region of France, uh, in a place called Villeneuve. So if you guys are interested in coming out and meeting the coaches, learning some stuff, go ahead and uh, head over to calgarybarbell.com, scroll down a little bit and click on the seminars link, and that'll take you to the ticket prices. I believe there are some or early bird prices still available if you guys are interested in joining us for those. Now, without further ado, let's get down to it. So our first submission here comes from Eugene. Now, Eugene is doing some squats, I do believe. And uh, let's take a look at those squats. So I think he mentioned in his email he has issues trying to keep his knees over his toes and he, he notices his sort of knee valgus or knee collapse. Now, one thing that I would mention is that honestly, it's not always that big of a deal um, needing to fix that knee valgus. It does look like it's kind of paired with him tipping forward a little bit. So if we could get that knee valgus to lessen, we might be a little bit more efficient. So honestly, one of the biggest things that I've found is when people try to minimize their knee valgus, they end up pushing their knees out, which generally uh, kind of works against you once you hit the hole. By pushing your knees out too far, it causes them to collapse in to a stronger or more efficient position, which for you is with your knees in a little bit. So by pushing the knees out too hard or too far, we're actually causing that change and making it harder to catch the knees in a certain position. So what I would try, Eugene, is I would try thinking knees forward. Just push your knees straight forward. Don't worry about them going out too far. Uh, and that way you're not, you're gonna get less shift. And if you get less shift, then ideally it's less dynamic for you to have to kind of catch as it happens. The other thing I would play with is stance width. Now, if you think uh, about bringing your knees in, or sorry, bringing your, your stance in just a tiny bit, we can see that the knees are pretty comfortable pushing from about, let me get my pencil here. So about this position. Now, if we go straight down from there, it might just be that you're a little bit more comfortable or a little bit uh, stronger in a narrower position. I think that's something worth investigating. The other thing I would try to do is work on some pause squats or pin squats where you can really highlight that bottom position and try to achieve uh, reps where you don't see the fault happening. So if you can accentuate that bottom position, forcing yourself to be able to drive up from here without the knee collapse, then you're gonna be able to repattern yourself to do it less. Uh, those other things that I mentioned there as well, in terms of cueing, less knees out, more knees forward, and maybe play with your, st with your stance width uh, and see if those combined have the impact that you're looking for. Um, we're gonna pull up our next video here, and this comes from Ethan. Ethan's doing some sumo deadlifts. So let's take a look at Ethan's sumo deadlift. So it looks like he's doing a pretty good job pulling into tension there. Uh, we've got a very narrow grip here, which is something I might want to address. Simply being able to uh, pull your back sort of a little bit more, uh, pull a little bit more depression in the shoulder blades might be easier with a bit of a wider grip as well, a wider stance. Uh, maybe towing out a little bit less. It looks like we might be towed out a little bit further than the where the knees want to go, causing you to essentially collapse in these arches here. So watch this foot as we start to pull. Oh, there we go. There we go. So watch this foot. We're having a real hard time kind of stabilizing. You notice that there's a lot of movement and a lot of shaking in the, the foundation of the lift there, which I think is probably caused by being a little bit too towed out. We notice that knee knocks in just a little bit as you initiate the deadlift. So the biggest things I would work on, 
pretty decent starting position actually, but you're a relatively long guy, you've got long legs, so I would advise you to try to take better advantage uh, of, of limiting your range of motion, limiting how much of that length you need to pull through by widening the stance a little bit, which will allow you to widen your grip just a tiny bit. Now I'm thinking, uh, what it looks like here is that the knurling, if the knurling is here, your grip is maybe uh, just just inside of or kind of like midway through the knurling. You got maybe two fingers on the on the smooth, two fingers on the knurling. I would come out until your first fingers on the knurling, and that's usually a pretty good spot for most people uh, who are comfortable narrow. But it's going to allow you to get a little bit more depression through the shoulder blades, which is going to keep that bar better in line while you're moving through your deadlift. The other thing, like I said, is I would move the heels out wider and bring the toes in a little bit so you're not quite so toed out. Uh, I think that's causing a little bit of instability in your bottom position and just making the position feel maybe a little bit more awkward than it needs to. So try those out uh, and I think that's going to help. Let's look at some of the later reps here and see what else, if we see anything else break down. Now notice that the position is, is looking like it's getting harder to hold for the back there. And part of that is more than likely because of the grip width and that sort of exaggeration of your stance. Hopefully that helps my man. And we're gonna look at Joe's bench press next. Uh, there it is. Beautiful. Joe, what are we doing man? Tarps optional, clearly. Shirts are for suckers. Let's see what's going on here. So pretty tight setup. We'll notice one thing, I'm just gonna point it out right off the hop. He sets his shoulders in the setup. Now as we unrack, we don't see those shoulders change position. Watch. Uh, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Sorry guys. There we go. Shoulders, watch those shoulders as Joe initiates and unracks this bench press. The setup here, he's got a good position, a little bit of arch going on here. Those shoulders didn't move as you unracked the bar, and that's often something that I'm critiquing people for on this show, on this series, whatever you want to call it. Um, but that's a big thing, especially with these commercial racks, you notice how big the difference is in pin height. Now, when you have to adjust the pins, it can make it really tough to find an ideal uh, sort of start position there. So, so far so good is what I'm saying here, Joe. Ooh, aggressive leg drive. Yeah, watch this. And on the drive, Katja. I got daylight, Joe. We gotta get that butt down, my man. So that'd be a big thing to work on there. Um, couple different things you can try. Now playing with your stance width and playing with how far back the feet are can often help you with that. The other thing is I would use more leg drive in the descent so that throughout the lift, your leg drive is more consistent. It's not something that's off and then snapping on, which is causing a big shift in position. It's something that's driving you up onto those shoulders consistently throughout all of the reps. The other thing is we're getting a fair bit of sync now, especially on that last rep. I wanna take a closer look at this last rep here. So we come down, we're sinking in pretty good. Now in this bottom position, we'll see if I can catch it here. Watch these elbows and watch these hands. We'll see if I saw what I think I saw. So right as we initiate the lift there, out of this bottom position, can I scrub? No, that's not gonna work anyways. But we're getting this like shakiness, really needing, because we're completely relaxed here. And we notice the elbows kind of pop forward to get that bar moving back, which is a good thing. We want that bar moving back, but I don't think we need to get quite as exaggerated with all this body movement out of the bottom if you were maintaining better tension throughout the descent and throughout the set as a whole. There we go. So that's gonna be the biggest thing, Joe. Um, control how much that bar is dumping into your chest. Control that leg drive a little more. Try to be more consistent with the leg drive. That was actually a really good rep. I know I'm getting a little bit sidetracked here, but in terms of the amount of sync and touch, that was a bit better. Still butt off the bench. We got butt off the bench on almost all these reps, if not all of them. But the control, the, the sync was a lot more controlled there. So I would work on, uh, let's say three big things. Number one, bit of a lighter touch on the chest so that you're not collapsing and having to regain as much position when you reinitiate the lift. Number two, consistent leg drive so that you're not 
picking your butt up off the bench when you start to press back off the chest. And number three, I think I only had two things. But those things I think will go a long ways for you. So work on those and let us know how that works out for you. Number four is gonna be Brandon doing some deadlifts here. Now let's take a look at those. All right, Brandon, looks like you got a pretty cool uh, sort of garage gym vibe going on here. I like this setup. All right, looks pretty solid. Look at that. That's gonna be something I'm gonna point out right away. The boys got those shoes. I'm sure that uh, were I a younger man, I would say that they're lit or they're fire or something like that. Those are the shoes that I wear, Nike Hyper KOs. This is a bit of a different colorway, but they're good. So uh, I would say first off that this looks like a set of stiff legged deadlifts. So the butt's nice and high. Um, this start position actually isn't so bad. Um, now it's not always super easy to diagnose like, oh, your butt should be down, your butt should be up, whatever. But if this is a strong starting position and it looks like it is, we've got the knees uh, or the shins relatively vertical. We've got the lats packed down. We've got enough of a hip drop so that we're gonna get a little bit of knee extension helping us out of that bottom position. Um, but from here, this is where things start to get sloppy. So we're doing a lot of touch and go reps and the hips are staying very, very high. So notice the difference. I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna mark hip height on this first rep because we have the technology. So I'm gonna to try to trace, oop, sorry guys. I'm not real good with this whole uh, pen thing yet. So let's look at the hamstring angle and his back there. Now this to me, like I said, looks like a pretty good starting position. Now let's, uh, let's play through and we'll try to catch this this is where he's starting from on his second rep. Now look at how much higher his hips are and how much, how much difference there is in this back angle here. Now that is really changing your starting position. So if you're gonna have a starting position, it should be consistent from every rep to the next. Once it starts changing, you start training a bit of a different pattern than what you're gonna be doing in a, in a competition or when you're trying to lift a max. When you're trying to lift the max, you're gonna be pulling into that more hips lower position. So unless you are training stiff leg deadlifts, in which case, that's, that's my fault. Um, but the other thing that we're seeing here is a lot of touch and go reps. So we're keeping those hips high. The shoulders are starting to roll forward pretty aggressively. Look at the distance between the shoulder joint being out in front of the bar there. We've got quite a bit. And these are rudimentary lines I know, but it's pretty far out. Uh, the shoulders are pretty far out in front of that bar, which is generally something that uh, is not super advisable, which we do a much better job of here in this initial first rep. So, long story short, stop touching going your reps and let's clean up all your rep work on the deadlifts. It looks like you're doing one good rep and then a bunch of just kind of garbage volume. Now, not garbage volume because they think that you're, uh, you know, anything less than a good and capable lifter, but I don't think you're putting a whole lot of intent into these repetitions. Um, so let's break it down here. The number one thing that I want you to do is stop touching going your reps, pull into the same position every single time. The number two thing I want you to do is again, just be more consistent. Put a little bit more intent, a little bit more focus into each rep and try not to end up stiff lagging your sets of volume on your deadlift. That's my tirade for that. Uh, and the last one here is coming from David, and David is doing some deadlifts. We got a lot of deadlift submissions here. All right, so let's go back a bit. This video is very well trimmed, so we started right away. So it looks like for David, we might actually be getting a little bit too low in the hips, because what's happening is those knees are causing a pretty decent deviation in the bar path and that start position is changing quite a bit from where it's starting. So, let's see here. Just gonna pause it so we can scrub through this a little bit easier. Here, pretty decent start position. I think one thing you might be doing is getting that bar a little bit too close to the shins, honestly. Um, with the bar so close to the shins here, and let's just, sorry, I'm gonna clear that. Let's take this point and be conscious of this throughout. 
this lift. Now, as we start, you can see the bar moves out in front as necessitated by this shin angle here being a bit steep. So he's gotta go out to get around his knees because he's starting that bar just a little bit too close. Now, if he started the bar a little bit further away, like here, right? Then that bar is gonna be able to go straight up. He's gonna be able to keep those lats locked in and he's not gonna have that extra force pulling him out in front of himself as he tries to go through this lift here. So, that's the first rep. The second rep, so we, we're doing a good job actually of pulling these lats in here. Now if you watch what he's doing right here with pulling those shoulder blades down, you see that depression? This is something I talk about a lot that a lot of lifters don't do very well uh, and David is actually doing a very good job of it. But as soon as he starts, you'll see we get packed in and then pulled out around his knees. So. I would say try to put the weight on your heels a little bit more so that the knees shift back. Now that's almost definitely gonna raise your hips a little bit, but it's better off that you start with that hips raised position than get thrown into it by starting the lift. See how we're hips down here and then the first thing that happens, um, watch his butt as we start, boom. First thing that moves in this first frame as those hips start to hike up. Now again, if we started with those hips higher, we'd at least be able to anticipate that and start from a stacked, strong brace position with those hips higher, instead of being thrown into that as we start the lift. So, a couple big things here, David, is I want you to try to get your shins a little more straight up and down by putting more weight on your heels. Load those hamstrings, push your butt back behind you. Yes, it might start you a little bit hips higher, but I think it's gonna allow you to maintain a more consistent position off the floor, excuse me, and not see those hips rise as you start through the lifts. As well, don't worry about getting that bar touching or right up against your shins because it's getting thrown out because it's almost a little bit too close to you. All right, guys, that is it for us today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, if you guys have any questions about any of my critiques on any of these lifters, or you have some critiques of your own, uh, potential solutions for any of their problems, feel free to share it in the comments below. Please be constructive. Any uh, unnecessarily negative comments, I'm probably just gonna delete, because we don't want none of that jazz here. We're constructive, and we're here to help people be better lifters. Um, one of the biggest reasons that I started and wanted to do this series is because I wish that I had something like this when I started lifting. I feel like I'd be further ahead than where I am uh, if I had had some resources like this around me, uh, some people you know, critiquing technique or, or like kind of showing me what I could be or should be looking for in people's technique. So uh, if you guys are fans, hit that subscribe button, leave a like on the video, and uh, we'll see you guys next Friday for Form Check Friday. Take care.